Hello and welcome to this video where we're looking at uh, focus stacking to get an extreme macro shot, an extreme close-up. This is a, a cuckoo wasp um, stack. So I've took various photos using um, a sliding rail, so a focus rail, where we take a shot and we move just less than a millimetre forward each time taking a different shot and you can see how shallow the depth of field is from that shot there. There's hardly anything in focus on there. And if I just flick through the photos, so I'm moving forward now, you can see how we progress through different steps of focus. So that is why we focus stack the photos. When we work in this close, that is all you actually get. That is all the focus that you get. Just a slither of a millimetre sometimes. Because you're working that close to the subject. So we move forward using a sliding rail. We take a photograph at each step. And then we stitch all the photos together. And that's what we're going to look at uh, in some software. And we're actually going to use Zerine Stacker, which is some brilliant stacking software probably one of the best out there for doing this type of work so we'll go through the process first of all obviously you have to take the photos so we've got the photos I've got them in Lightroom I'm eliminating some of the photos that I've done so I've select a range of photos that I'm going to use so starting with this photo I'm going to click and select that photo in Lightroom and then go to my last in the stack, which I've marked, which is there. I'm going to hold down the shift key and click, and that will select all the images. So you click on the first one, go to the last one, hold down the shift key, and that will select the last. Now I'm doing, on this shot, I'm doing no adjustments in Lightroom itself. You can do that, but you need to apply the same setting to all of the photos if you do that. I'm going to be okay with this I think so we selected the photos and then we go to file and we go export with preset and you've got Zerine stacker on your computer then it will be listed on there you can see it's stuck there so we just click on that and that will you can see now we're exporting the images you can see that selected up here and you can see the bar going across so it's converting the images and exporting it to the software. And when that gets to the end, it will open up Zerine Stacker. And then we'll take you through the next process. So nearly there at this stage. Okay, so now it's opening Zerine Stacker. Which is specially made for this type of work. There we are. So it's opened the program now. It's just playing now, getting the photos into some stacking order. And as it does this, it lines up the images. So any movement and that it tries to line up as we stack them, it will do that automatically. Now there's lots of different things you can do on this program. Uh, I'm going to take you through the basics. But we need to know that there is two different styles or two different formats for stacking the images, two different settings. Uh, and we'll have a look at that in a moment, which we're going to actually use. So if I click through the images here, I'm just going to use the down arrow key. And there we go. So we go through different ones, and you can see the, the image changing as we go through. Now I'm just going to go back to the top one. And then we go on the menu, we click on stack. And you can see we've got two different settings. There's P max and D map. Now, with the first one, it begins with the first. It generates a composite output image using what's called a pyramid maximum contrast algorithm. <laughs> if you understand that. Okay, so basically two different types. I'm going to use the D map. I tend to get more success with that one, but 
you can use the two or you can do the both together and get a result from each but we'll try this one first so I'll go to DMAP and you see now it's got current operation and we will we'll get a little bar going across and you can see on the right hand side this is the on, on this side of the screen this is the current output in progress so basically as it goes through each image you can see going down on the left hand side it's putting those pictures together and it's building up the picture on the right hand side taking the slither of focus from each one and trying to put them together on the right there you see it's not doing a bad job at that stage it's coming on you can see a few artifacts so you can see a few ghosts and whatever on on the the stick that's actually sitting on there and that's common it never comes out perfect and there's quite a lot that's still out of focus on there okay at this stage we have to set the threshold so what this does if i move that down you will see that it will select an area of focus and basically i want to get that up and so we've just got basically the the in focus area selected so that's that's about what I would use. You can see I've got rid of a lot of the background. There's still a few little bits there. I'll go to I. That's that's okay. We'll try that. So I'm going to click on OK. We can still see we've got a few little bits around here that we'll have to correct. So I'll click on OK. And we wait. Always a waiting process in this. And it depends on how fast your computer is. And uh, how much memory you've got. On how well it performs this. So you can see now it's building up the photo on the right hand side. So it's taking those little slithers. And you can still see we've got a few little bit of ghosting on there. A few little areas that aren't in focus. And what I'm going to do at this stage, I'm going to flick through uh, the input files here and I'll, I'll put show is adjusted so I'll click the little tick there I'm going to go through each one and what I'm looking for is one when I've got this ghosting effect there what I can do is I can copy part of the image on the left when we edit this to the right hand side so a bit like a clone tool so I can clone out areas and take what's on the left hand side to the right hand side in the outputted image and I'm just looking through if we're going to be able to do that quite nicely there's also these little areas up here I've lost a bit of detail I'm not sure whether I actually had that so I'm going to go to the top one there and now that's probably there's nothing on there that's going to be the one back focus on there and if I come forward I haven't actually got that within the stack I'd actually do a larger stack I've took some of the stack out but I've made this one quite small so I haven't got too much in focus on this one but it just makes it easier for me to to show you the the way to actually process the images okay so you see I've got a little bit on this part there you can see a little bit not too bad. I could actually do that in Photoshop and sometimes actually use Photoshop rather than use this software to do that. If you haven't got the full version of this software, so the professional version, you haven't got the editing facility anyway. So you would have to actually do that in Photoshop. So I'm just wondering at this stage whether it may be better to actually go over to Photoshop and we'll, we'll do it that way. I think we will. And then for people who haven't got the full version, if they buy the software, you can see how we can do the editing in in Photoshop itself. So what I need to do now is we've got the outputted images or the one outputted image and I need to save that so I'll go to file save output images and then basically I have to say where I want to put it so I need to select a folder and I'll just go to this 
drive and create a new folder for this so I'll just call that stack one and create it's important to remember where you've put it of course okay so we click create and the file format you can select JPEG or TIFF I'm going to keep it as a TIFF at the moment because that's higher quality and uh, it'd be the best option so we can now when we click on that we have the file saving parameters so we can say whether we want it 8-bit or 16-bit I'm going to keep it to 8-bit in this case and I'm just going to click on OK and that will now save the file and we see the progress bar going up there and it says it's complete OK so I'm just going to close the in stacker which will bring me back to Lightroom I don't need Lightroom anymore I actually close that and I'm going to open Photoshop and we'll have a look at how to actually edit that picture and get the best from it using Photoshop itself and just wait for the software to open Okay, so with Photoshop open, what I need to do now is to load the file. When I load the file in Photoshop, I'm starting with a blank image. I just double click the background and that will bring up that will bring up uh, the facility to open the file. So I stored it on this drive. And I called it stack one. So I just double click on that. And open up the image. Okay, so there we are. So now the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to crop the picture and, and take out parts that I don't actually want, and that will get rid of a lot. So I'm just going to crop this inwards. make sure that the cropping options are clear just click clear on there so I'm not resizing it I'm just cropping it and that's going to get rid of a lot of the rubbish that I don't want okay so I'll just press the enter key if I double click the magnifying glass that will show you the actual size of the image so it's still quite large and basically what I want to do is to get rid of these little artifacts and a lot of that is going to be using the clone tool so I select the clone tool there first thing I'll do is right click and duplicate the layer so I have the layer protected so with the clone brush selected and get a suitable brush size Make sure the opacity. I'm going to bring the opacity down actually to about about 74 percent, 75 percent, and we hold down the Alt key and click, and that will sample the area where we hold it down, and we're just going to paint out these areas. using different area so all the time I'm clicking on the the alt key and you do have to do this with most stacking uh, things that you actually stack you're going to get artifacts it's all part of the game and the better you you are with Photoshop and putting them right after the better your images will be it is one of those areas where it helps to to have a knowledge of Photoshop 
or some other editing software to get the best from your image once you know it's very rare you'll get a perfect shot from just stacking the, the images you do have to play about with it to get the best so you see these little layers I'm tightening this up now I want to get rid of this completely And like anything, it takes time. You you do have to be patient if you want to get the best out of it. I'll probably just copy this piece there and... Uh, Use that to, to get some detail in that. So it's just using different areas to to get what you you need to make it look fairly realistic. And to neaten up those areas, that's not too bad. That's got rid of the worst from there. We are zoomed in quite a bit, just a little bit there. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. And all the time it's just shifting areas where you're cloning from. That's not looking too bad at all there now. Just a little bit of area on the eyes there. The eyes are always the hardest part because you've got these compound eyes. So you need to, to make sure that you're getting selections that are basically in line. Too bad. Well, be here now. This is where we need to be careful now because I don't want to lose the patterns of the eyes, so we need to try get an area so I'm clicking there I'll go to this area that looks okay looks okay so you can see now I'm getting there we're not done too bad with this actually there wasn't too much to tidy up this is an area now where we've got this ghosting effect. And if you can imagine when you're actually using a focus rail and you're zooming in, obviously you're getting closer to the to the insects and you are getting these little areas as you as you get closer actually the, the picture isn't the same size. As you get closer the picture gets bigger. And as you go further away it gets smaller. So just see how complex it is for Zerine Stacker to work all that out and to line up the image. And you can actually do that in Photoshop, but it's nowhere near as successful or as good. Um, it's okay for things if you're doing stacking of, say, landscapes, for instance. You don't have to be using uh, close-ups. It can be to get an whole area of uh, the picture in, in focus. So you can do that with any type of image. And you can stack the images get the effect that you want so you get it all in focus all through that's looking okay now let's just double click the hand tool 
and there's our cuckoo wasp now sometimes it helps to sharpen the image it's a really sharp lens this but it's you need sharpening a little bit so I zoom into 100% for that so I double click the, the magnifying glass again I'm going to duplicate the layer that's because if we get any nasty little artifacts on there after I've done it I can always lower the opacity of the layer to, to get rid of that so we go to sharpen and I use smart sharpen which is all my preferred sharpening method I'm going to go quite high on this. We've got the reduced noise there, and I probably don't need that too high actually because there's not much noise on there. The nice thing about actually stacking images is because you're working in such controlled conditions, your ISO can be very low. You're obviously using uh, this as a dead insect, by the way. A casualty from the garden and a lucky find it's such a beautiful insect to find so it's a really lucky to get this one the colors are absolutely amazing okay so now we've sharpened that let's just zoom out double click the hand tool and there we go there's our image now if it's a little bit it's a little bit light on the top obviously this area where the the stick it's sitting on is, is very very light it's probably overexposed slightly but that's not really part of the image well let's say we wanted to get rid of that again I'm going to duplicate the layer and what I'm going to do is to select a layer mode of multiply and that will darken the image and then I apply a mask so we put a mask on the image and I want to revert this mask. So basically, now I'm looking at the, the effect of the multiply effect where it makes everything darker. And I've put a mask on there which is shown as white. And white means that the mask is opaque. If we make that transparent, so we change it to black, then we will see what's underlying underneath without any effect on it whatsoever. So a quick way of doing that, I'll actually do it this way. So we'll go to image adjustments invert making sure it's on the mask there so that's inverted that and then if we use a white brush I can paint using a white brush I can paint on the areas that I want to darken so I'm just going to go along here just want to darken that slightly And I want to darken this area. And once I've done that, if it's a little bit too much, you can change the opacity of the layer. So you see by changing the opacity of the layer, you can get any variation that you want there. And that's looking good. Let's just flatten that image now. And I'm happy with that. There's my completed image. And if you just double click the, the magnifying glass, you can see the zoom tool rather. We can see just how close we actually got to that using the stacking software and extreme macro photography. Mm -hmm.